today on At Your Service, we will be discussing the American Rescue Plan grant funds designated for schools around social, emotional, mental health, behavioral health supports in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And today we are joined by my co-host, Mr. Ryan Vokland, Director of Student Services. But today, Ryan will be my guest and I will be talking and discussing the initiatives this grant will hold our students and families in our county. So welcome, Ryan. Hi, Susan. Thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity to talk about these initiatives. So Ryan, can we go when we're going to talk about this grant today? It's a pretty big, it's a huge initiative. So can you describe why this grant funding came about? Sure. So the grant funds that I am the steward of in my office um, are the social, emotional, mental health and behavioral aspects of the American Rescue Plan, which the American Rescue Plan was in three um, came in three bills, three federal bills, and certain aspects of them were designated for certain uh, were designated for certain portions of of support for education. And um, my portion that I'm in charge of of supporting schools is through what we call ESSER two and ESSER three. And so we've been allocated a certain number of funds to support students with their social emotional um, transition back to schools, and also with their mental well being and and their behavioral health. Okay, that's a that's a that's a huge initiative, a huge lift um, for our, our particular division. And I'm sure there's other divisions in the school system that also have received these grant funds. So it's just these that happen to be the ones that fall within student services, correct? Yeah, correct. And exactly. And and with with these funds, though, we collaborate with a number of offices to make sure that we are doing what we feel is best for students. Um, as as they go through this, as they've been going through this this uh, difficult and challenging transition. So, but yes, there's a lot of funds out there, and the key is to make sure we have the best supports for kids. Right. So, if parents are watching, we have that social, emotional, mental health, behavioral support, but there's those academic support services that are in other divisions as well. So that's sure. good to know. So, since we've returned to face-to-face -to -face learning. What is the sense that you're getting from students and staff in the schoolhouse? Yeah, great question. And um, I think, uh, you know, there's a, just like during the pandemic, there's some students and some staff who are are, are handling and, and, and are okay. Um, there's, there's extra stressors that have been on people, obviously, but there are a number of, of students and staff who this has been a challenging um, transition back to in-person learning. Um, staff has more demands on them than ever before. We're seeing that nationwide, not just in Anne Arundel County. So that you know puts a stress on them in terms of of um, their demands to support students. Students, many of our students haven't been in the classroom in 18 months. So just that transition to structures again, um, and and getting back to the regular routine of academics has been more difficult than in years past. And um, and some of our kids who uh, may have struggled before the pandemic, that those struggles may have been exacerbated by the stressors of the pandemic. So we're working to support those students in their transition back. So I would definitely say it's been a it's been a challenging year, but our our students and our staff are very resilient, and some of these supports that we're putting in place are there to to help them through that transition. That's good to know. Definitely, it has been a challenging, you know, time in the past two years. So it's good to hear that we have the ability to add these multi-tiered systems of support um, that we focus on in Anne Arundel County. Can you explain to the viewing audience what multi-tiered systems of support is and why that is important related to grant programs? Sure. Um, the multi-tiered systems of support is a framework on how we look at um, supports for students. So we do it in a tiered way. So tier one supports will be those supports that are um, available for all kids. So we call them the universal supports. Tier two supports are targeted interventions or initiatives that are um, geared towards a smaller group of students that need more targeted supports. And then tier three supports are, are more intensive supports that are really for a small number of kids who really need us to wrap our arms around them and provide them with those supports that are more intensive to allow them to be successful. So as we developed the initiatives for this grant, we looked at initiatives that could be tier one, tier two, and tier three. So we're really providing those best supports for all kids. That's, that's interesting. And it's it's I like how it's like well thought of like, 
the level of supports that students and families need. So let's look at the universal support. So you talked about, and those are our tier one supports. These for all students, right? So can we, can you discuss a couple of the initiatives that we have in this American Rescue Plan for I think SR2 and SR3? Um, and one of the first ones I'm gonna ask you about is second step. I hear a lot about second step um, at the elementary and middle school. So I'd like if you could explain to, um, our audience what Second Step actually is. Sure, so um, Anne Arundel County, uh, a couple of years ago, we um, we decided that um, we wanted to have a block that was designated for social emotional learning or wellness. Um, so student, and, and building community. Um, so students could have that opportunity in the morning to develop that classroom community because as, as we know, it's important to have a positive classroom environment in order for students to be available and, and ready to academically learn. So this block of time is really there for that. And part of that block of time, we've designated at least one or two times a week where um, uh, teachers will teach the second step social emotional learning curriculum. And it's a digital curriculum. Um, teachers have a platform um, that they use and they, um, they have lessons that they provide to, to students that are range from 15 to 25 minutes and really focuses on what we call the castle standards and these are the social emotional learning standards where students learn responsible decision making relationship skills self management self awareness and they learn those skills that they need to be successful citizens of the world and it starts as young as as pre-k and it goes um the second step curriculum goes all the way up to eighth grade um, and in, eight, in middle school, um, it's done during their advisory, and they also do one to two um, social emotional learning lessons. But this is, this wellness or this social emotional learning and advisory period also allows students to engage in community building circles, um, where they can um, they can build that community. So it's it's all about developing those social skills to allow students to be available for learning and to be the best um, citizens and, um, and and scholars that they can be. And so that's, that's, that's the that's the elementary and middle. Right. So and that's interesting because we've been hybrid or virtual for so long. Students have really have limited interaction. So now that they're back in the schoolhouse, they're learning how to get along again and interact and make those good decisions. So that's good. Can you talk to me a little bit about what the high school has? We do not have second step. Can you tell? Um, tell us about the high school programming for social, emotional, and well, um, well-being, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so last year during virtual learning, um, high schools, they, they put into the high school schedule, it's a block called community wellness. And so um, in, that, in that block, we, uh, we provide schools with a once a week lesson on wellness um, that, that you know, goes through a number of wellness topics. It ties into social emotional learning, physical wellness, mental wellness, well-being, and uh, goal setting. There, um, there's a number of different topics that are that are relevant to high school students and how they can be successful in high school and then learn those skills that allow them to be successful beyond high school. So we provide um, schools with one lesson per week, and then schools also have an advisory committee that. Um, that also develop lessons throughout that block that they can um, put into that that time period. Um, so it's been something that has been a transition and, and been a little bit different for high school, but we've, we've gotten great feedback and we're continuing to take the feedback from teachers and try to develop lessons that are best for them in terms of implementation and best for students in terms of learning skills, having discussions, and then applying some of the strategies that they're using. So, And we partner with Johns Hopkins University to develop that content. So it is a great collaboration between Anne Arundel County Public Schools and Johns Hopkins University. And I will agree, and it's great because we do receive feedback from the schools so that we're, that committee is definitely listening and providing, you know, some um, interactive supports, whatever the school needs. And so it's, it's a nice collaboration. I'm going to transition a little bit to your initiatives for attendance because we know attendance is critical. Students you need to be attending school to learn, you know, to be available to learn. So can you talk a little bit about your attendance initiatives for our system? Sure. So we did allocate some funding where schools can be creative around 
a preventative attendance um, initiatives. So these are um, these could be incentive initiatives or or uh, promoting uh, positive attendance and the reduction of chronic absenteeism. So right, you know, some ideas that schools have come up with is just um, uh, competitions around attendance where they, you know, um, school counselors would get on the announcements and and have classes going against each other to promote the, that positive attendance. We have programs, um, uh, mentoring programs or check in, check out, what we call them, where students will check in with a mentor around attendance and then they will, the, the staff member will give them that positive encouragement um, to uh, to be there every day and developing those relationships. We um, we support programs that are smaller group programs around attendance. Um, there's one that's called the Seven Habits of Positive Attendance, where we'll have groups where those kids will learn positive attendance skills. So it's really we're allowing schools to be creative and and submit proposals for for positive preventative attendance programs, and then we will fund those programs for schools. So. Uh, we're really excited about those opportunities that schools have to promote that positive attendance. That's fantastic, especially because you can, you know, cater it to your school community and the needs of your, you know, your schoolhouse. So that's awesome. Another initiative or another program that we've worked on together is the documentary, the documentary screenings um, with curriculum. Can you let people know what is going to, you know, what we've done in the month of October and then what is going to you know happen through the rest of the year absolutely so we um we have a quarterly documentary series that we're going to be doing around mental health and social issues um we are uh such as social media bullying um anxiety um for for students and uh we already showed uh during bullying prevention month we showed the movie uh the film the upstanders yeah. and uh we have we have basically a week period where anyone within AACPS, parents, community members, students, staff can watch this film. Um, and uh, we uh, we promote it on our uh, AACPS.org web website. Um, staff, uh, teachers are, are um, showing the movies during um, advisory or the community wellness block. And then they have lessons that are activities that are tied to it. Um, so our next film that will be coming out in January will be uh, called um, like, and that is all about social media and the impact of social media on adolescent, adolescents and children's mental health. So stay tuned for that. That information will be coming out on our website after the new year. So um, we're excited for that. And we'll have a couple more documentary series uh, movies after that in, in, in the spring and then closer to the end of the school year. Yeah, those are fantastic. Um, so let's move on. There's two more programs that we want to um, discuss for the universal supports, and that's Naviance. So as you know, I'm very familiar with Naviance and I've been using it at the high school level for quite a few years. So I'm excited about this new initiative. So can you talk a little bit about what's gonna happen? Yeah, we're gonna expand our contract with Naviance to move into middle school six through eight. And Naviance is a, a platform that promotes college and career readiness. So high school students already engage with this platform where they get lessons on college and career readiness. They they can apply for colleges, they can research colleges, they can do virtual field trips or tours of colleges, and school counselors really work closely with students on that. So now we've expanded this to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, where we're going to be this school year where counselors can work with students on thinking about college and career, um, you know, in those grade levels and start to do college and career interest inventories and lessons around college and career. So, it's a really great initiative that our counseling office will be embarking upon very soon and uh, and uh, excited to have that contract expanded to sixth through eighth grade. Me too, definitely, because we're really looking at blueprint print legislation that's coming out around college career readiness and just some of the updates with that. So I look forward to working um, and expanding that program. Um, one of the last programs I want to talk about is MTSS. And what is MTSS? I know there's a huge training initiative around the MTSS framework. Sure, and we talked about that earlier, earlier multi-tiered systems of support. So we do have an office that's dedicated to multi-tiered systems of support around um, uh, behaviors and, and, uh, and uh, just supporting a positive classroom environment. So many of our schools have been trained on restorative practices, uh, positive behavior interventions and supports, community building circles. 
So the, the grant has allowed us to get all of our schools eventually trained in this. So, it's, so that office has been embarking on a large training um, initiative for teachers and staff on multi-tiered systems of supports. And that's, I think, what I like about the framework, there's intentional focus, right? Mm -hmm. So it's intentionally focusing on what students need and the levels of support that they need. And so now we're going to transition to tier two support. And I know you mentioned earlier, but this is more of a targeted focus for a smaller group of kids. Can you talk a little bit about some of the tier two interventions? Sure. So we have a number of tier two supports also. Our, our first one is we actually entered in, uh, we entered into a contract with a, a contracting company to get um, additional mental health staffing. So um, specifically school psychologists. So we're able to contract when we need additional school psychologist staff. Um, we, we uh, you know, we work with this agency to provide that support to schools and we're going to have that additional staffing also for some social work staff too. Um, we have uh, two training programs for AACPS staff that will eventually um, also uh, roll out to the community. We're starting with AACPS staff. Our first one is we have um, youth mental health first aid. We are training, uh, we'll eventually train about 48 master trainers um, within our student services uh, office who will be master trainers in youth mental health first aid. Now youth mental health first aid is an eight hour certification for people who don't have mental health training and it teaches them how to provide um, support when a student, uh, when an adolescent or child has a mental health crisis or a substance use crisis, and it just basically guides them on what to do. Uh, so we will, we have opened those up. There are optional trainings for ACPS staff. We have about 15 of those offerings from now until the end of the school year. Um, we're doing a similar model with um, trauma training. So we are training about 15 social workers and people personnel workers. Um, through it's called the ACEs interface training through the family tree and they will be master trainers and they will also be able to provide um, training for uh, AACPS staff and that will come out in the new year. So those are some of our trainings. So for the trauma training is the training for teachers because I know mental health for first aid yes because they're so face to face with students every day in the classroom but the trauma training is it the same audience, any kind of any faculty. Yes, or we're going to start out with with AACPS staff and offer things after school, or if if school uh, principals want to make that part of their regular PD, um, we can we can work with schools on that. And then we're going to open it up once we've gotten our our um, you know gotten a good role with the with the trainings. With them, we'll open them up to more community virtual training. So that will be. Um, down the road, but uh, yes, and, and there is an Anne Arundel County um, spin to the training where uh, Dr. Pam Brown, who works for the Partnership for Children, Youth and Family, is one of our people who will be training the master trainers, and she's going to talk about trauma through a lens of Anne Arundel County, which is, Thank you. will give um, us great information. That is a great, that's, that's fantastic and well needed just with the social, emotional and mental health needs that we have. Um, can I participated in this, the outdoor wellness space training and it was fantastic. Can you explain a little bit to the audience what, what that, what it entails and what, why sure. it, it's important for schools? Sure. So um, research shows that, um, you know, when we do when we work with kids outdoors, there's actually a lot of mental uh, well-being benefit to that. And so we did do a training for student services staff on how to use therapeutic strategies outdoors. Mm -hmm. So to complement that in the in the grant funding, we are working with Arlington Echo, our outdoor education center, to create outdoor wellness spaces at uh, around 10 of our schools. Um, so they can have a spot where counselors can run groups or do individual counseling, but it's also a spot where teachers can teach classes. And it's just a, um, a space that's going to be very um, therapeutic and, and support, you know, going to be great in terms of supporting the well-being of students. So uh, that's a great initiative that's actually already been started through a previous grant and we're just kind of extending it through this grant funding. No, and I think even for our staff, just for some decompression to go out and have that outdoor space, that calming space, it's, I think it's going to be, I think people are going to use their spaces outdoors at schools much more now. Um, Let's shift a little bit about clubs. So what are, what are the initiatives around clubs? And I think we have a new a new club, I think was piloted before. Um, can you talk about our mental health clubs? 
Yes, we um, we fund or we um, allocated some funds for mental health clubs or, or wellness clubs in high schools. So we're partnering with the University of um, Notre Dame of Maryland, um, Notre Dame University of Maryland and St. Louis University. And they have a program called Student Alliance for the Flourishing, which was piloted at Broadneck High School last year. And then um, it was really successful. So um, they they. Tar, uh, they their focus is around they're called the human flourishing standards which come out of Harvard University and um, so we're going to pilot it in three additional schools Broadneck is one and then Northeast High School Annapolis High School and South River High School and it's there's going to be about 20 students that will be in the club with parent permission and they will learn how to um, flourish as individuals and then flourish within their own community and then flourish globally. So they'll be connected with other schools around the country and internationally who have this club who are learning about what it takes to flourish as 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 a society. So uh, and we look um, hopefully, you know, we'll see success with this program and we'll look to expand it to other high schools. That's fantastic. Awesome. I look forward to, to learning more and hearing more about that expansion. Um, let's transition a little bit. You sp we spoke about attendance in the tier one universal supports, but when we look at supports, we talk about that multi-tier. So here we're in a tier two. And can you talk a little bit of what is happening at this attendant work, the attendance works community of practice? Sure, so attendance works is a nationally um, renowned organization um, that focuses on chronic absenteeism and promoting positive attendance. And they're a great partner and they've worked in other school systems. And so we entered into a contract with them and they are working right now with the Mead cluster where they're supporting principals and um, administrators and uh, student services staff on innovative and creative outside the box ideas and structures on how to support positive attendance and reduce chronic absenteeism. So they're doing trainings, they're we're doing focus groups where um, they're doing side-by-side -side coaching collaboration with these schools on how to engage and support the community and get the community involved in terms of promoting positive attendance so we will expand that um, initiative to two more clusters over the next two years okay thank and you so we are in the initial initial phase of that and it's been going really well awesome all right so another wonderful tier two initiative is rites of passage mentoring program mentors are important and we know that you know some kids really do need a mentor um can you talk about the initiative that is happening at annapolis middle school or yeah, well? another, another awesome pilot program we're uh, collaborating with the office of equity and this is um, their initiative they have um, partnered with annapolis middle and Bowie state university um, and they, uh, they've they created a, a mentoring program that they're getting ready to start for uh, geared for seventh grade um, black males. Um, and it's a rites of passage program to support these students on being successful in middle school and just being successful as as men and as, as young young men and as, as uh, students and scholars. And um, we look um, and, and we, we feel really strong this will be a, a successful program and we look to replicate that in the future at, at other schools. Fantastic. So really excited about that, uh, just getting started really recently, so. Great, wonderful to hear. So our last tier two support is called Mindfulness Teacher Training and Curriculum. Um, yep. Can you talk a little bit about that initiative? Yes, um, we put some funding in there for teachers uh, who want to optional um, take a mindfulness course through Mindful Schools. And then they can, and then the idea is, is infusing mindfulness into their regular instruction. Um, research shows that mindful strategies, mindful techniques really support students in their own mental well-being. And, and the best way to do that is just to infuse it into regular instruction, not to standalone mindfulness is, is fine, but actually when you infuse it into your regular academics, it, it actually is even, even more highly effective. Um, so we are going to be providing teachers the opportunity to engage in these trainings and then curriculum materials that they can use in their classroom to support that. So we'll be rolling that out really um, in, the, in the near future. Thank you. So let's move to tier three. And this is more of a smaller intervention group, right? And so it's really very targeted and it's a small number um, for tier three. Can we talk a little bit about the programs under the grant funding for this? Yeah, so our first program has been a program that we've had in place for since 2005. Mm -hmm. 
which is our expanded school-based mental health program. And this is a program that we have five partner agencies who provide clinical counseling within our school building. So it removes the barriers of transportation and for, for some of our students. And those, those agencies are Villa Maria, Children's Guild, Thrive, Innovative Therapeutic Services, and um, Army Behavioral Health. And most of them only take Medicaid insurance. Innovative takes private insurance, but that does limit some of the students who can access um, these, these services and the school. So we, with the grant funding, we've now opened it up to students who are uninsured can access these, this programming for the next three years or these services for the next year, three years. So uh, we've, we've already rolled that out and we started getting referrals for students who are uninsured. So we're, 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 our goal was this was a gap in service and we're trying to eliminate that gap in service. And it is well needed, definitely. So that's awesome. Can we shift a little bit? I know there's two programs related to substance abuse um, and recovery. Can you briefly mention those? Sure, and this is another gap uh, uh, that we have with, you know, services within school, within our schools. And so we have partnered with Thrive to create the substance use prevention and intervention team. So we're going to have two clinicians. We're going to cover the whole county and for students who have been referred. Um, and, and, you know, we will be working with that student, with the, the parents um, a, a, to provide them, um, whether it's individual intervention or individual counseling in the school building, group counseling, family supports. Um, and we may end up supporting the family to refer those students out to more intensive supports. Um, and this could be not just substance use, but it could be, could be vaping, could be um, tobacco use, could you know drinking, right. any types of substance use that that um, that is an issue for a student. We are this program is there to support them, um, and it's a targeted or a more intensive international intervention for those students. And then it's also an option. There's also the option for schools to these therapists can also provide psychoeducation. They can go into classrooms to talk about substance use prevention. They can talk to staff about it. Um, so we will have that option also. Thank you. Those are very important. Um, expanded childhood behavioral intervention. And then lastly, then we, we're gonna talk a little bit about system behavioral threat assessment software. And I know we don't have too much time left, but can you briefly mention those initiatives? Yeah, and I also, I, I failed to mention on the substance use prevention part, um, also another program that, that is linked to that is called STAR, and it's called Screening Teens Access to Recovery, and that's a partnership with the health department and our school nurses, where a student can go to the health room and um, and get a screening um, right there on, on the uh, computer uh, through Adolescent and Family Services. They can do a screening to um, assess what kind of supports that student would need. So that's, that's tied to the substance use prevention intervention team. So I failed to mention that. So I just wanna make sure I did. So the, um, so let me change gears to your question. The, the expanded childhood behavior intervention, that's another program through um, that we, we work with through Thrive. It's been highly successful and it's where we have, Thrive has teams, one is a mental health clinician and a behavior tech mission. And these teams um, work with a referred student and it's, it's mostly been in elementary, but we've had it in middle and high school also. And they will go into the classroom about four hours a week and work with that student, work with the teacher on behavior modification strategies. And then they will reinforce those strategies at home with the parent and work with the parent about four hours a week or the parents um, to reinforce those positive strategies so we can support the student in being more successful in the classroom when they've had those behavioral struggles. Um, so that's been very successful. And then the other one you mentioned was the behavior threat assessment software. So when a student makes a threat of harm to others, um, currently our, our way of handling that is more of a paper pencil method. Um, the administrator does a threat assessment. They determine whether it's transient, which means that it was made in jest or in the, you know, in a, you know, right in the moment, it wasn't serious, but they still document it. They determine behavior, um, disciplinary consequences if necessary, and they provide um, work with the student services team for safety support or mental health support. Um, if it becomes to be a more serious threat, we call it serious substantive or very serious substantive, then they would work with their student services team to do a safety plan, a more intensive threat assessment. 
So now we have software that we can actually use to do that do that uh, threat assessment. So um, it'll be a better way to kind of support those students and, and track um, information. So, so that will be rolling out in the near future. Thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Just keeping kids, you know, students safe is is critical in this day and age. Um, I just wanted to thank you for being our guest today. And so I uh, I appreciate the time, but I just want to say to the viewing audience, thank you for participating and joining us today. And I will see you next time on At Your Service.